Hi, I'm Dr. Joannides, Chief Medical Director at Optimum Re. And this talk is on Optum from the Optimum Academy Pulmonary 101, video number six, and it's on lung cancer. So today we're going to talk about lung cancer and the problems uh, regarding that. So what are risk factors for lung cancer? Well, smoking is the leading cause of lung cancer. It causes about nine out of 10 cases of lung cancer in men and about eight out of 10 cases of lung cancer in women. So definitely smoking tobacco is a risk for lung cancer. Even secondhand smoke is a risk for lung cancer. Other causes of lung cancer can be you know, related to family history, some people even related to dietary supplements like beta carotene, or there may be exposures to radon gas in your house, or asbestos or other pollutants, or radiation of some type, exposure to radiation causing lung cancer in some people, but far and away the leading cause of lung cancer is related to smoking tobacco. So here are some stats from the CDC on the percentage of people in certain states that smoke tobacco. Current cigarette use among adults <clears throat> in the US, and you can see the darker the color, the higher the percentage of current cigarette use by adults. And you can see in certain states like West Virginia, Kentucky, Arkansas, they're particularly elevated. But there are several states where the level is high, whereas other states have very low uh, cigarette use by adults. So lung cancer is a serious and potentially life-threatening condition and the mortality risks associated with it can vary based on several factors. Some of the key factors in influencing prognosis and mortality of lung cancer include the stage at which it is diagnosed. So obviously early diagnosis is a critical factor. Uh, when the disease is localized and has not spread to lymph nodes, et cetera, it can be surgically removed and generally has a better prognosis. Advanced stage cancer that has metastasized other organs is especially worrisome, and those people are not candidates for life insurance. Then there's different types of lung cancer, uh, non-small cell cancer and small cell cancer are the two main categories. Not, uh, and I have those listed here on the slide. But lung cancer usually carries a very high mortality risk for life underwriting. So applicants with a history of lung cancer may not be candidates for life insurance, especially if they're still smoking tobacco products. So guidelines for lung nodules, and we see a lot of lung nodules in people that apply for life insurance because they've had a CT scan of their chest, maybe for even some other reason. So uh, one or more tiny nodules may be present. And how, do, how is, can you figure out whether the nodules are worrisome or not? So there are some guidelines called the Fleischner guidelines, which can be very helpful. And I've shown these here. And depending on the size and the person's prior history, in other words, if they were a smoker or not a smoker, are they at high risk or not? So size is important, past history of smoking is important, and then the way that the uh, nodule is described. So you can see on the right, is it described as ground glass? So it looks like if you um, saw some glass that was broken, on the sidewalk or in a parking lot and it's kind of ground in to the sidewalk? Does it look like that? Does it look partly solid? Are there multiple uh, nodules in one certain area? Um, the shape of the nodule, is it round or smooth? Or does it have kind of a spiculated look like a sand spur, something along those lines, which would be more worrisome. So these guidelines can be very helpful 
when you're reviewing applicants for life insurance. Tobacco use and accelerated underwriting. So we know from research that smoking uh, or tobacco use worsens mortality risk for all cancer subtypes, especially for lung cancer. So uh, you know, different companies use varying uh, definitions of how they classify tobacco use in certain candidates for life insurance. But any, uh, any person who is regularly smoking tobacco products is definitely at risk so one thing to remember is that the adverse mortality impact of smoking may linger long after quitting smoking. So even a decade later, people are still at risk for lung cancer after they stop smoking. Now, one of the things that we see uh, in uh, life underwriting these days is accelerated underwriting. And in that environment, without the benefit of fluid testing like urine, nicotine, or cotinine screening, uh, people can slip through who actually are still using tobacco products, but don't admit that on the application. So you need to have well-constructed tele-apps to drill down with questions to tease out smoking history uh, in order to try to call out those people who are still smoking tobacco, uh, since their risk still remains quite high. And as I said, even after they stop smoking, uh, their risk remains high. So smoking tobacco has what we call a long tail. So uh, even after people stop smoking, the risk of cancer remains higher than a non-smoker and if you were a heavy smoker, especially if you started at a lung age or smoked for a long time, you have a increased risk of lung cancer and should have annual lung cancer screenings for up to 15 years after you stop smoking. Most people don't do this, but your risk still remains high. So people should be undergoing uh, surveillance to ensure that they don't develop lung cancer while they're smoking or even after they've quit smoking. So um, even um, the United States Preventative Services Task Force, which is pretty conservative in what they recommend, um, they think it's important enough that annual screening for lung cancer with low-dose computed tomography in adults 50 to 90 who have a 20-pack year smoking history and currently smoke or have quit smoking within the past 15 years should get these studies done. So annually, they think people should be screened with low-dose CT scans of the lungs because the risk of lung cancer is so high and people that either continue to smoke tobacco or have smoked in the past. Now, I did mention that radon is another possible source of risk for lung cancer. And how does radon uh, get into our houses? It actually comes through the basement if you have a basement or the floor if you don't. And there are what they call radioactive daughters or polonium-218 or polonium-214 that emit alpha particles and continuous high exposure to radon can actually result in lung cancer. So uh, when you purchase a house, uh, usually you have a radon level checked in your basement if you have one or your first floor to detect, you know, what what level of radon is present in your house. And here you can see the high and low areas of radon in the United States. The darker red areas are considered zone one, and those have greater than four picocuries, uh, which is a high level. 
Zone 2 is in orange, and those are counties with predicted average indoor radon screening of 2 to 4 pico curies. And then the lower uh, zones are Zone 3, counties with predicted average indoor radon screening less than two pico curies, which is uh, what would be considered more ideal and uh, a low uh, risk of lung cancer. So just to give you an idea how this works out, uh, if you have pike, uh, radon levels of zero to less than four pico curies, when you purchase a house, no action is required. So you're in the low risk zone. However, if you have four to less than 20 pico curies, you need to take mitigation uh, procedures within two years in order to reduce that. So you may need to have special vents uh, put in or some kind of ventilation to blow out the radon or seal cracks in the uh, the basement floors or other things. And you can see that if you have huge uh, radon levels, like greater than 200 detected in a basement or a house, you need to take mitigation within three weeks. In other words, that's an emergency, basically. Uh, you can't live uh, for any length of time with that level of radon since you'd be at high risk for problems. So, uh, that completes our video on lung cancer. Uh, we have others coming up to complete our pulmonary 101 course on lung cancer in the Optimum Academy.